Hey guys, welcome back. I'm really excited about today. This has been on my mind since the beginning of the year to start teaching this method to you, but with COVID going on and the world changing, it was not the right time. Now is the right time. I'm going to teach you a new way of coloring. Even if you're a beginner that started two weeks ago, you will be able to do this. This is the method that brings you all the way up through advanced art. It's the way you should be doing it. Unfortunately, coloring books were not designed for artists. They were designed for relaxation, fun, um, nostalgia, bringing you back to that Zen state and you know, that childlike feel. But a lot of you want good pictures and you want to become artists. So I'm gonna break it down into steps. This type of colored pencil work is usually done in colleges, in schools. You will never learn to be an artist watching a hyperlapse video. You just won't. The reason why is because it snaps a picture every 8 to 16 seconds, depending on what setting you put on. If I'm doing a stroke every, say, second, which I could probably do a stroke in less than a second. If you're only seeing one of eight strokes, you're missing everything in between. It's going too fast. So for this, I'm only going to be doing small pictures, but I'm going to slow it down, way down. One of the reasons that I created the group, now everybody's invited into the group, and we'll talk about that again in a minute. Everybody is invited, and that's where I will be able to give you more personalized instruction individual to you, where I'll be able to see your work and say, no, do this, do that. For now on, this is the method that I'm going to be using, but I will be doing the video on smaller objects. Now, I did the pretzel. I did the strawberry. I didn't give you much instruction on them because and I did that on purpose. I knew. If I showed you what the game looks like up, it might spark your interest to say, well, what are you doing? And if you've noticed, I haven't given you the pencils because sometimes with this method, one or two strokes is all it takes. And if, if I gave you the pencils, it wouldn't even be enough time on the screen between those pencil marks. The groups that I created are going to be my control study. <laughs> How they're doing will be the way I tweak up my, the way I'm teaching you. So if they're struggling with something, then that means people that are not in the group will be struggling and I'll be able to make adjustments. Naturally, before you learn to walk, you have to learn to stand. You have to learn to put your foot forward. You need to balance and then you can walk and then once you learn to walk, you can run. By the time I'm done, you're going to be running. But I first have to teach you how to stand and balance yourself. And those are your beginner lessons. Now, we've already done them. I'm going to link them. I've already taught you how to do a gradient. That is just standing up. Doing a good gradient is bottom level. Now, the last video I showed you, the five steps of a real picture, that is what you're supposed to be concentrating on. This is going to be a method that if you have trouble with your hands, you will be able to do this because you will no longer be making large gradients. Your pictures will no longer look like everybody else's. This entire method, I'm going to teach you how to do texture. The whole premise behind this is teaching you not to just do the gradient, gradient being only part of the whole, but to create those textures that make the picture come alive. The first thing that we're going to have to consider is realistic expectations. Now there are three things that will affect this. Your paper quality, your sketch quality, and your subject matter. Paper quality is obvious. You need a paper that has a good tooth. Better the tooth, the better your picture will come out. It will give you more to work with. It's like sculpting. If you don't have enough clay for the project that you're working on, your project is going to be affected. Well, tooth is like our clay. It's what we have to work with. So the better the tooth, the more tooth, 
the better picture will come out. It'll just give you more to work with. Now you have a couple of options. One, have the coloring book sketch copied over onto good paper. That's normally what I do. The minimal quality paper that I use, I would say I use it for 90% of the demonstrations that I do, is Giorgio Pacific 110 cardstock. Again, that's Giorgio Pacific 110 cardstock. I get it at Walmart. Um, I pop it into my printer and I just print the, the picture very easily. When you're having it copied at a copy center, you can bring your paper with you and have them printed on better quality artist paper. Personally, I recommend uh, Bristol Smooth by Strathmore, although there are so many other papers. It just happens to be that's what I've always used. The next thing would be sketch quality. You want to make sure that there are no lines where there shouldn't be lines. And that would be when a coloring book artist tries to influence the way you're shading and they may put their own shading in. I try to stay away from that. And if it's on the paper when I first start, I usually take it off. And we're going to go through preparing your paper in a whole other video. Those wayward lines do affect the outcome of your picture because you have to disguise them and you have to disguise them using darker colors which affects your tonal values and where you put them and black is pretty harsh so you have to really get down with the black and the darker colors to get rid of these lines so it's much easier to just get rid of them before you even start and then you have the freedom to do whatever you want and the last thing is subject matter if your sketch is off at all your picture will be off you're not going to get any better than what the sketch is. And that's why most artists spend an incredible amount of time getting the sketch right to begin with. A good sketch will give you a good piece of art. It just makes sense. And the last thing I want to tell you is due to the limitations created by the coloring book style, it's just the coloring book has the coloring book style. It's more cartoony. A photorealistic representation of it is not really possible. Mickey Mouse would not look like Mickey Mouse if it was if Mickey Mouse was done in photorealism. There are pictures out there that are more realistic. So if you're going to be doing a cartoony picture, it's going to come out looking cartoony. If you do a more realistic sketch, you can get it very uh, close to photorealistic. What I've seen in a lot of people's art, and I mean a lot of people, newbies and intermediate, is you rely too much on just the gradient without taking into consideration that every object contains texture. Life is not just a gradient. So what I'm going to be teaching you guys to do is texture. How do you create a visual representation of what an object feels like. And that may sound harder. It's really not that hard. It's just different. You've learned how to do the gradient. The gradient actually goes underneath. It's the base layer. What we're going to be doing is then, instead of you spending your time making layer after layer after layer of gradient, we're gonna add texture on top of that gradient which not only will fill up the tooth space, but it'll make your pictures look 100% more interesting. Life isn't smooth. Life is bumpy, rough, soft, hard. So texture is where we're going to be spending most of our time concentrating. But there's also another on top of texture. So you have the gradient, which gives shadows. Then you have your texture, which is going to make you want to reach out and touch. Third thing that we need to concentrate on is sheen. What is sheen? Sheen refers to the finish or the amount of light that the object reflects. Your highlight controls the sheen. If it is a hard highlight, very bright and doesn't feather out, you've got a very slick surface. If your highlight is spread out, it's feathered, it's very um, blended, you're going to get a more matte sheen. So we're going to be concentrating on those two things, texture and sheen. In addition to, of course, 
your color blending, which colors that you are putting together to create this picture. Now you're going to need two videos on this topic. This video today was introducing you to what method we're going to be doing from now on. We're going to be working on texture and sheen. The next video that's coming up, and I have really bounced between both of them, which one I was going to put up first. So I'm going to put them up pretty close together. The next one is going to be on color recognition. When do you change your pencil? Which is another thing that a lot of people have a problem with. What colors to choose? What colors are blendable? Now we've been working with the CMW workbook. It's going to play a very important role in what I am teaching here, but also being able to recognize the colors visually. What pencils do you pick up first? I'm going to teach you that. We're going to do exercises in every video, having you pick out the colors and me kind of telling you what I see in the picture. And I've spent a boatload of money buying a whole package with reference pictures in it that I am allowed to show and use. So you're going to be able to take advantage of that very shortly. We're going to learn how to do that. So sight recognition of the colors is the third thing. So I'm going to let you guys sit with this information that I've just given you, digest it, try to get your mind around the fact that you're not going to be doing big gradients anymore. That's what's hurting a lot of people's hands and frustrating a lot of people. We're going to work on textures which are way better for your hands, much more fun, much more interesting on the page. And then we're going to work on how to create sheens. I will see you in the next video, which, which we're going to start color recognition. Take care and be safe. Mm -hmm.